Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Nick Malgieri. And today, it's really my pleasure to have America's most famous pastry chef and cookbook author in my kitchen to bake with me. And today, we're thinking Emilia Romagna, right, Nick? Right. And we're going to make two wonderful torte for you today. I'm going to make something from Modena called Torta di Tagliatelline, and you're going to make... Something from Bologna called Torta Nera con le Noci, a delicious chocolate cake. Don't leave the kitchen. That's it, real fast, real fast. Come on, get that baseball arm moving. Oh, oh <laughs> Okay. Okay. Non c'è ketchup. No. <laughs> 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 Basta. Sì. Sì. Sono molto delicato. Mm, molto delicato. Grazie a lei. Grazie, Mariana. Grazie a voi. You know, my mother's favorite leftover sandwich. Come on, you're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. Look at how pretty this is. It's delicious. How do you like that? I think, I think you're great. <laughs> And now we're ready to do the twist. So, looks gorgeous, smells wonderful. I use my hands. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> so, Nick, I've got the pastry all ready. This is just a pasta frolla that, that looks I made. Terrific. Does it's got it look a little good? bit of sugar in it, right? About a quarter cup of sugar, one and a half cups of flour. It has a little bit of salt, one egg, and five tablespoons of unsalted butter. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And then I roll it out, and you see I, I learned from your books. I really do. Oh, I've got my cold you. marble board. That's right. That's a big help. Because when we're talking pastry, we're talking cold, right? That's Definitely. a that's a real Makes important a big word. Makes a difference. Makes it a lot easier to do. A no lot easier. No matter what you're doing. And I've got it on parchment paper, and now Nick is we going sprayed to the pan. pan. We're using a, a piece nine of paper pan. in the bottom of the pan. A little bit of parchment paper. Makes it paper. easier to unmold later. And now we can flip this right here into we the Should pan. We put this right yeah, here? put this right here, and we're just going to take the dough and flip it into the pan. And we're going to have to patch That's this flipare down. Flipare in Italian. Oh, flipare! Right? I forgot that. Flipare. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to let you put that in there. Slack. We want it slack. So give oh, it a little okay. play. And it doesn't have to come all the way up to the top of the pan, at least if it's coming up halfway. Right. Well, we but did I do a good job on I, it? You know what? Okay. You get the holy picture today for <laughs> dough rolling, Marianne, <laughs> definitely. Right. And that's St. Joseph, the patron saint of pastry chefs. Is that's that right? That's right. That's right. All right. Look so at that. That looks fine. Does it look good? All right. So when Terrific. we have that in the pan, we can just set this aside now okay. because now we need to make the filling. So I need to give it a trim, right? Okay. Yeah. Just, just a little trim one. it a little bit. And let me get the filling ingredients. About halfway for this. up, no? Yeah, halfway up is good. Okay. This is something that, you know, I originally had when I was in Modena, and Nick and I have traveled in Italy together, haven't we? In Sicily, not Remember, in That's Emilia right. Romagna. We were in Sicily we together. Were in Sicily. That was a while ago. And I'm just going to, excuse me, I have to go right over your face for a minute here. Hey. There we go. Okay. It's a small kitchen. While you're doing that, I'm going to beat up some butter. Four tablespoons of butter for our torta di Modena Got and a quarter in. cup of the sugar. Now, this is really the important process right here, isn't it? Creamy. Want to get that nice and fluffy? Nice and fluffy and Good. creamy, really important. So, in the meantime, should I put this stuff together here? We got yeah. the diced candied citron. Yes, that's about and a half a cup. Then there's candied orange peel. Candied orange peel. Another candied half a lemon cup. Candied peel. Yep. Can I have those eggs? Sure. All you know right, what? so I will crack them. Want to crack them? Here. Put them right in there. And then you can just pour them in. All right, after you've got the butter and the, the sugar really well blended, then you want to add in those eggs. So I'm going to turn that off before I do that. That looks good. So two eggs. This is going to become our filling now. So we want to get this smooth. And this cocoa powder just goes right in here, right? Right Marianne? with that. And That's what about the almonds? In here too? The almonds go in there Ground too. Ground up almonds. So we have about three quarters of a cup of candied fruits mixed together. You can use orange peel, lemon peel, citron. So what about the inevitable question? I hate candied fruit. Well, if you, you, you hate candied fruit, if you hate candied fruit, 
I mean, I don't, but you could, everybody you, always says that. Yeah, you could use dried fruits, or you can get some really good Italian candied fruits, yeah. or make your own. The candied fruit in Italy make is your so own. wonderful, isn't it? So now we have you get cream. a half a cup of light cream goes in, and we just, and I don't want to splatter that a half a that bottle of amaretto, or? No, no, not a half a bottle. We want about, oh, I'm going to eyeball about a tablespoon. About of, a tablespoon. Yeah, like wait a minute. We wait. leave a tablespoon in the bottle. Yeah, okay. leave a tablespoon in the bottle and put, okay, okay, ooh, 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 that's enough. All right, a tablespoon of amaretto, which we should tell everyone is almond liqueur. Now, this that is. That gives a nice flavor. This is looking good. So that we just throw this in and mix it in with the rubber spatula? Ah, Lord, pazienza, pazienza. One minute. Okay, so now, yeah, we can put that in. Let me get this Should out I of the way. Should I just mix this in? Yes. Are you in a hurry or something? <laughs> a train to catch. I know you have a train to catch. It was so nice of him to come and join me in the studio today. So we mix this up. And why don't you finish mixing that? that because looks great. That's just part of this recipe because now what we have to do is make the tagliatelline part. That's right, we the have, pasta. We have to do the pasta. So, I did some pasta just before you got here. And here it is, and all this is two eggs, one cup of flour, a dash of salt, and just a drop of olive oil. A little oil in there, A little too, oil, huh? and it makes a really nice moist dough. So now we want to roll this out. So I'm going to flatten this. Oh, okay. We're you know what? Piece. Let me cut it in half because I'm getting over anxious now. Yeah, I feel lazy. All right. Now, you know the story about this torta, this torta di Modena. The story goes that this was made for Lucrezia Borgia. You remember uh -oh. her from the Deste family in Ferrara? The you lady know. that had the hollow ring with the poison inside, Yes, yeah, right? so we're not going to talk about that part. But yes, Lucrezia was a member of the Deste family, who were the leading rulers of Ferrara during the Renaissance. So look at how nice and stretchy that is. Mm. So tell me, uh, it's I should at the tell widest. you. Okay, at yeah. the widest. Okay. So the story goes that while she was passing through the street one day on horseback, a man who was standing in the crowd noticed her, and she had long, beautiful, blonde hair. So, this is starting to sound more and more like Lady Godiva every minute. <laughs> he, being a chef, went back to his kitchen and created the tagliatelline to represent her golden tresses. But I have to tell you that in every picture, every portrait I have ever seen of Lucretia Borgia. She's got black hair. She's got black hair. <laughs> so much for the story. Maybe they were making the tagliatelle with squidding. <laughs> All right, so now what we want to do is that looks great. we want to roll the sheet of dough out so it's nice and thin. Not too thin, but thin enough so that you can see your hand underneath That's the sheet. That's the next to last setting, right? Right. Well, most pasta machines go up to seven or eight, but depending on what you buy, it could be a higher setting. But don't go to the very last setting, because the last setting would be much too thin. Oops. There. Now, we have to make the tagliatelle, or the tagliatelline cut. And tagliatelline, we know, means tiny, Little, thin, tiny tagliatelle, thin cuts. Which yes. we're never going to do if I can't get Here, this machine let me inside help the you. hole. Thank you. So much for men in the kitchen. Okay. Oh, I don't know about right. that. I okay. usually use a hand crank, I, just like they do okay. in Italy, well, Marianne. Well, I'm lazy, okay? All right, there we go. Don't don't ride me today. Okay. Now, Here, I'll hold it. we put this through the thinnest, the thinnest cut. That looks fantastic. That look good? This is the vermicelli cut. Okay. So now we bring okay, up. Here's our dough. Here's our dough. In the pan. So let's do that. Let's Got now. A few you here wanna, that wanna, were on the side. Let's kind of shake them in. Shake them in the bottom so they're they're loose. You know, you don't want these to dry. So when you do this, it's best to have company in the kitchen because then they can help you. So you want to fan that out a little bit. That looks get good. Get that in. Does that look good? Where are our other piece. ones down here? Wait. Yeah, I've got more here. Okay, that looks good. Let me put a few more in. And after you do this, well, now you put in the filling. I'm telling you, this is so mm, delicious. It looks good. So now that goes right on top. Look at that. Mm, 
I'm so glad I'm making something today that you know you find interesting because it's really hard to top you. I mean, you know, Thank you've you. done everything. Okay. Thank you. I have several recipes for pastries from that region that are made with different kinds of tagliatelle, mm -hmm. but you've never seen this one. Oh, right? yeah, this is this is definitely Isn't a this? new one on me. Okay. Now, once you have it all spread nice mm -hmm. and neat, that looks great. Give me that bowl and get gonna, rid of it. Okay. I thought he was going to lick the bowl there for a minute, but mm. we're going to put now, we put some of these just loosely over the top. You can take some of those, and this is going to provide a nice, interesting texture to this torta. And you, when you eat this, it's in a very thin wedge, okay. and you usually have it with some nocino, you know, which mm, is that, that wonderful liqueur from uh, Emilio Romagna. No, I think that looks right here, right here. There's a little open spot. And then while he's doing that, you have another piece of parchment paper ready. Give it a little spray, because you want this to stay moist, or you could butter this. This goes over the top, just like that. Mm -hmm. Your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And that honey, looks fantastic. this goes in the oven. We're gonna cook this for about 30 to 35 minutes. So there, that one's all ready to go. What's next? Next is torta nera con le noci. Okay. Oh, I love the way so he says that. So here's my butter. Yeah. And into the butter, we're just gonna do this part by hand because it's so easy. Okay. We're gonna beat half the sugar. Now, what Marianne, should I do? Maybe you can start whipping up the egg whites because okay. what we're going to do is whip up the egg whites with the other half of the sugar. All right, so I that have we're eventually got there. All cup. that's it. Yeah, one cup. That's it. That's the okay. eight egg whites from the batter. All righty. Okay, so butter and sugar here. Mm -hmm. Now we've got our melted chocolate, which is cooled off nicely. Now Ooh. two ways to melt chocolate. Yes. Either this is the pantomime of melting the chocolate right here. Mm -hmm. Either here. Let me bring it over here because it's easier to see. Either take the chocolate, boil some water, turn the water off, stand the pan of, uh, turn the heat off, I mean, stand the pan of chocolate mm -hmm. over the hot okay. water, or do it in the microwave. Now, Either way works extremely look, well. And we do that because we don't want to burn the chocolate, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. okay. So when so, this is foamy, excuse me, when this is foamy, can I add some sugar? When do I, I, I like to let it get to okay. a soft peak soft and peak. then start adding sugar. Will do. All right. That looks good. Now, next is the egg yolks. The eight egg yolks. Right. I've got right the egg in. whites. You're good. You're good you with know your what? hands. Let's light you... the uh, okay. cream for the filling. All right. The cream so is So we can on. show that to everybody. That so looks good. So I'm heating good. how much cream? That's a cup and a half of cream. Cup and a half of cream is in Here that pan. Here are the ground up walnuts and the flour. Wait, 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 you're going too fast. All right. Oh, they look fantastic. Let's all right, crank let's the speed all the all way right. up. We're waiting for the cream to come to a full boil. That's really important. If the cream doesn't come to a full boil, that they all look right. beautiful, Mary. Is Marianne. this okay? That looks perfect. So I'm gonna take oh, perfect. Okay. I'm gonna All take right. those while you All watch right. the cream. I will do and that. And finish up the cake batter. There you go. Okay. okay. Now because this is kind of stiff, yep. what we do is we take about a quarter of the egg white and just stir it in. Boy, you really stir. Yeah. You don't need to have And then the rest of the egg white just gets folded in. So see it's better to do that. Yes. Be okay. That needs to come to a full, full boil. Full boil before I can put Better this in. Better to do that than try to fold the egg whites in. Don't they look beautiful? Did I do a good job? You, uh, I'll tell you, we're out of holy pictures, but now you get the gold star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, and then we're going to fold that in. <laughs> That's looking great. You yeah. can see, you can tell you're a pastry chef just the way you fold. And this is really important well, because... Well, you know, Americans fold this way and the French fold this way. Yes. What do you suppose that's all about? I don't about? know, but we should tell them why you're folding in egg whites. We fold in the egg all right, whites. All right, it's at a boil. I'm putting it this is? in. It yeah. is? Fine, let's turn off the heat. Put the chocolate in. Chocolate and butter go and in. Butter, we got lots of butter. How much butter we got here? Our that's one and a half sticks. sticks. Six okay. ounces of butter. All right. Okay, the cake batter in. looks fantastic. All right, that's in. And now I just whisk this, make a ganache. Okay. Let's, let's just let, let that it sit. stand for okay. a couple of minutes. I don't have to do anything. The heat from the cream yes. penetrates the chocolate and melts it. 
All right, now. Here's our cake batter. Beautiful. That just goes right into the pan. You don't really have to worry a lot about smoothing this, mm -hmm. mainly because mm -hmm. since it's a buttery batter, yeah. it kind of gets to its own level at the point where it okay. starts to melt. I'll take that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I'll take this from my hands. Now. 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 Baked cake right here. Baked cake. Okay. Should we throw this one oh, in the oven? Well, let me put this in the oven. I've got it on Let's for you. Put it 350. in the top oven, yes. Okay. And how many minutes? It takes about 35, 40 okay. minutes at the most. We want this to remain kind of fudgy in the center. Yeah, definitely. Fudgy in, in the fact, center. In fact, okay. now that I'm going to cut this one, I'll show you what that looks like. Marianne, would you do me a favor? Pass me that other cardboard because I want to oh, yes. put yep. my top layer. Everybody agonizes about doing this, and it's really easy. You know why everybody has a rough time with this? Hmm. They try to cut straight across. Straight across. I go along now, the edge. Now, my way of doing it is just go round and That's round and round way. where you, uh-oh. I learned that from you, though. Okay. <laughs> where you want to cut. And then you can go. And then just go That's right. through and through mm -hmm. and through to the center. And now you can see why this is called torta nera, because it's a chocolate right. cake. Okay. Nera this meaning black. This comes from black. a wonderful pasta and pastry shop in Bologna that's called Atti. Atti. Yes, I've been there. Yeah, I'm sure I've you been have. There. I have. I have actually I'm sure you have. Oh, done so an interview good. with Signora Bonaga. What if, we, what if we cut a He's little not piece listening. off here okay. and, and tasted it now? You no, want just to? Kidding. All right, let's, I'm getting this melted. Let's have yeah. the syrup. The syrup, okay. Here's our sugar syrup. Simple syrup. And you the tell essential them? ingredient. This is this is very difficult. It's sugar and water brought to a boil. Okay. Here's our little bit of rum for the sugar syrup. And, and wait a minute. Need... And a little bit of rum for the filling, All which right. goes right Got in. Got that. All right. Good. Okay. That looks fantastic. So yes. what we're going to do first is put some of this rum syrup on the cake. Wait. I have it on good authority wait that they minute. don't do this Where's at Octi. Where's my piece? Well, you have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait. Piece. Okay. Mmm. I can vouch for it. It's really yeah. moist. Good. Okay, so you so put a little. So this makes it even more moist. Now, I'll tell you what I often do with this filling is I take it and I whip it up. But the filling is so perfectly nice well, and look, smooth. Here it is before it gets thick, right? That's good. We have a before and after. A before and after. Let's see. Whisk I'll this just well. Just kind of hold that up a little yeah. bit here. Mm -hmm. Let See, it's thin. Mm -hmm. Watch the shirt, would you? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. They're the same color. <laughs> I know. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then you have to thicken this up. So we and should put it in the refrigerator first, right? Well, you know, you really don't have to. Okay, we can leave if it out. If you make this the day before and you keep it in a cool place, it's fine. You don't need to put it in the fridge. If you do put it in the fridge, you really have to be careful. It doesn't get Because you don't want it to get as hard okay. as unmelted chocolate but with all again, that which is there, kind of a nightmare. You don't have to put it in the fridge? All right. Not if I it's trust cool. You. Okay. Not if it's cool. You know what we need, Miriam? What? We need that pan of goodies that's on the platter. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I'm going to get it. All right. We need this. Here we go. Okay. And the pastry bag pastry is there, bag. too. Pastry bag. Now, I'm not putting in a ton of filling. The glory of this cake is what's on the outside. Mm as far as spreading on frosting is concerned. So this is neat because you don't have to make a separate okay. uh, frosting. This is the frosting yeah, as well as all. the filling. It's it's it. That's it. This is great. Okay. See what I'm doing? Yes. I turn this layer over to moisten Boy, the Boy, you cut really, side. really moisten yeah. it, don't you? Okay. And now I'm going to just turn it over onto the cake. Uh-huh. That looks good. Now you want the platter? Uh, in a second. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is mask the outside of the cake with the filling. Okay. Mm. Mm, that is so rich looking. Yeah, isn't oh it? My oh, goodness. it's such a great cake. This this is really you would eat this in a very thin slice too because it's so rich, yeah. right? And oh then boy. if the slice was too thin, you could have another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That is okay. beautiful. Yeah. That looks nice. Mm. Now, what I'm going to do here mm -hmm. yeah. is do the top a little bit. Do you need some of that in the pastry bag? Actually, you know what? Give me a chance to do the top here first. Okay. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, it's the reason that I'm not really 
spreading a lot on the top of the cake is because we're going to be piping on there in okay. a second. Okay. So the rest of that goes in the bag. Yes, now what do you need? Uh, I'm going to grab the platter. Okay. This, this is looking good. And so that we're not looking at cardboard, Yeah. I'm going to take the cake. Right off. Slide it onto the platter. I'll take that. Thank you. And then we're going to decorate the cake. And this is a fun decoration. Okay, let me watch. Beautiful. The torta di tagliatelle smells wonderful. Mm. I think we're going to have fun this afternoon because we're both going to enjoy each other's Def torta. Definitely. And I haven't eaten any sweets in two months because of my diet. Okay, so. well, today's your big day to have just a little Okay, little so here we go. Yeah. Top of the cake. Mm -hmm. A little line this down. This is the a side. lattice. Yeah. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Mm. And normally in Italy, you see so many pastries that are made with a diagonal lattice. This one is not diagonal, mm -hmm. it is perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the walnuts go in between. Can I do that part? You can do that okay, part. Okay, I'll just, start. Just like that, exactly. I know what to do. Okay. There, beautiful. And then you see, when you go to cut this, you cut in between these little walnut sections, and everybody gets a piece with walnuts. This is That's beautiful. right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we're doing the sides, just a little bit of piping up the sides. Mm -hmm. And then finally, and you can see, as I'm turning that around, you can see how that goes. And then the very last thing we're going to do is... Yes. A little border, a little right border. around yeah. the top okay. edge. Do you like to go outside in these little areas here? Yes. I answered. I, I answered you the, answered your own question. I answered my own huh? question. Good. Yes. Okay. There we go. This is so pretty and so Just professional a looking. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Being very, very stingy because I'm almost out of filling. But you got it. You, just there we go. Perfect. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scrape this bowl a little okay. bit better. Get a little bit and more. And now everybody can see how beautiful that looks. Oh, yeah. Torta nera. Now you're going to make a few little rosettes there? Or just, just a little few squiggles? Little shelly things mm -hmm. here. Beautiful. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, good. We got back to the beginning okay. again. Okay. That's it. Allora. It was gorgeous. Thank so, you. There you have it. Torta di Modena. E torta nera con le noci. Nick, I think we need to toast each other with something really special from Emilia Romagna. This is nocino, mm, made on the feast of Saint John. Mm. And it's perfect to go with what we made today. That's delicious. Isn't that great? The torta di Modena, or the torta di tagliatelline, that we made with the candied fruits. And of course, we put the raw noodles in the pastry A dough. A great combination. The eggs and the cream. And it's wonderful. And I want you to have some to take home. I can't wait. And then you made this. The torta nera con le noci. Beautiful looking. And you know, that cake is rich, but it's a little bit lighter because of those whipped up egg whites that yes. are in it. And then of course we have the walnuts mm. and the mm. cream and butter and chocolate and rum and it's a perfect combination. It's always a pleasure to have you in the kitchen. Thank you Jean very much. Jean. Jean Jean. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Nick Malgieri. Ciao. Ciao. I imagine that this is a really old antique polenta pop. Just look at the rivets here. These are copper, I'm thinking. My God, the whole thing is copper. You need a big stick and you've got to stir the cornmeal a long time until it becomes polenta and then it starts to leave the sides of the pan and then you dump it out. I don't know how you would dump this out though. This would really be difficult. But it's nice to see these antique uh, utensils. And I think that's a very good example of what one would have looked like.